ready to unpack some Canadian politics. Today we're doing a deep dive into the legislative branch. It's uh, the intricate system that shapes Canada's laws. We'll be using issues for Canadians as our guide. So get ready for some insights. It's like opening up the engine of Canadian democracy, figuring out what makes it pick. Exactly. We're talking yeah. about the House of Commons and the Senate, two kind of different groups that sometimes, well, clash. Have you ever wondered, like, how come the party with the most votes across Canada doesn't always get to call shots? Or how a small group of appointed senators can actually put the brakes on a law that, you know, everyone's talking about. Right. It's all about the mechanics of power, how things actually get done. Yeah. And today we're going to, like, pull back the curtain and really get into it. Yeah. So let's start with the House of Commons, the place where uh, things can get pretty lively. Oh, yeah. Think of it as Canada's political pulse. Yeah. Always buzzing, you know, with the energy of the people. Each member of parliament or MP represents like a specific district, a little piece of the Canadian puzzle. It's like their own political backyard and the voters are their constituents mm -hmm. and they have to answer to them, right? Absolutely. But here's where it gets interesting. You don't actually need the most votes across all of Canada to form the government. Just the most seats in the House. Wow, really? Yeah. It's this whole thing about majority versus minority governments. Hmm. So you're saying a party could like win a bunch of ridings by a landslide, but then barely scrape by in others, and they could still form the government, even if more Canadians overall voted for someone else. Exactly. It's all about strategy. Why? It's like winning a board game by like controlling the key areas, not just getting the most points overall. That's a great way to put it. And actually, our source material, Issues for Canadians, has this perfect example. Deepak O'Brien won his riding of Calgary East back in 2006. But get this. He didn't even get more than half the total votes. Wow. See, that just shows how location, even which writing you're in, can totally change the game. It makes you wonder, like, how do we make sure every single vote really counts? That's the big question, right? It's a debate that's been going on forever. For sure. But for now, let's uh, shift gears a bit from the House of Commons to its kind of more, hmm, I guess you could say Zen counterpart. The Senate? Yeah, the Senate. Yeah. Imagine a group of people whose job is to take a deep breath and say, Okay, House of Commons, let's think this through a bit more. Right, they're like the voice of reason. Exactly. And there are some pretty big differences between them. The House is all about, like, what people want right now, but the Senate. Mm -hmm. The Senate's supposed to look at the bigger picture, you know, the long game. So they're kind of like that friend you go to for advice because you know they'll give it to you straight. Exactly. They provide that extra layer of scrutiny to make sure new laws are actually, you know, fair and well thought out. That makes a lot of sense. But I'm curious, what are some of the other key differences? Well, for starters, how their members are chosen. MPs are elected by, well, us, hmm. you know, the people. But senators, they're appointed. And get this, they can stay in that role until they're 75. 75? Wow. Talk about job security. And what about what they're supposed to represent? Another big difference. Our source material mentions that senators should be representing the interests of different regions and minority voices. That's a big part of their role. So they make sure that people in less populated areas and groups that maybe don't have as much voting power still get a say. That's really important. It is. It's about making sure everyone has a seat at the table, so to oh. speak. OK, so we have the House, which is all about what the people want right now, and they kind of get the ball rolling on new laws. Then you have the Senate carefully looking over everything and maybe like pumping the brakes if needed. but. How often does that actually happen? And what does it mean for regular Canadians when these two groups don't see eye to eye? It's easy to think of the Senate, you know, like it's this big block of agreement, but it's not like that at all. Our source material really shows how different the senators' views can be, especially when it comes to their power to block or change bills from the House. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes those different opinions cause some serious friction. It's like we always hear two heads are better than one, but what if those two heads like totally disagree about where to go? Right. And that's where things get super interesting, at least from a political science point of view. Issues for Canadians actually has quotes from senators so we can see this tension playing out. Oh, that's cool. So like whose perspective do we hear from? Well, one is Senator Burt Brown. He was really passionate about having a more elected Senate. You know, making it more accountable to the people directly. I can see why someone would want that. Totally. But then you have someone like Senator Jean-Robert Gossier, who thought the best thing about the Senate was its power to bring in the voices of minority groups, the ones who might not have the numbers in the House of Commons. 
Those are such different ways of looking at it. They are. And it goes to the core of how we think about democracy in Canada. You know, how do you balance what the majority wants with making sure regions and minority groups have their say? It's a tough one. Yeah. No easy answers there. So, OK, just to recap the House. Full of elected officials, they draft the laws, and then it's over to the Senate for like a second look. But what does that sober second thought actually look like in practice? Think of it like, hmm, like a really thorough editing process. The Senate can suggest changes. They can send bills back to the House to be reworked. And in some cases, they can even say nope to the whole thing. Seriously, they can just like completely kill a law that the House already approved. They can, but it's important to remember that it almost never happens. The Senate is usually very careful with that power because, well, they know it could cause constitutional problems and people would be furious. So it's more of a last resort, like the emergency break. You got it. But even just the possibility of them rejecting a bill can be enough to get the House to rethink things or to get people talking. And that can influence what happens with the law. It's all very strategic. For sure. And this carefulness of the Senate, it probably explains why they often take their time, right? Right. They're known for being thorough, looking at every little detail. Makes sense, given what they're doing. But that difference in pace between them and the House, it brings up another question. What happens when the Senate's pace clashes with what the House wants, or even what the public wants, right now? You've hit on a major criticism of the Senate, for sure. Some people say that because it's appointed, not elected, and because they move slower, it's undemocratic and out of touch with what Canadians need. It's like the story of the tortoise and the hare, but in Parliament. Huh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. But then you have others who say the Senate's strength, IS, that long-term view, you know, thinking about the consequences that might not be obvious if you're focused on just the short term political stuff. So it's like this balancing act, trying to be responsive, but also really careful. And I guess there's no perfect answer. That's where you, the listener, come in. Oh, how so? Well, thinking about everything we've discussed, how do you feel about this dynamic? Does the Senate's power, you know, the fact they can slow down or even block laws make you feel like there's a safety net? Or does it seem like an unnecessary obstacle? It's definitely something to think about, and we'll probably come back to it as we keep unpacking how Canadian politics works. But for now, let's do a quick recap of what we've covered about the legislative branch. So it's kind of like we popped the hood on this super complicated car, right? We've got the House of Commons. That's like the engine really getting those new laws moving. And then there's a the Senate. Maybe they're the brakes. Maybe they're more like the steering wheel. It depends who you ask, I guess. But they're definitely adding that extra layer of like caution and making sure things are thought through. Yeah. And we can't forget about the drivers and all this, the Canadian people. At the end of the day, the whole point of the legislative branch from those uh, lively debates in the House to the Senate's more well, you know, measured pace. It's all about serving the people. It's about making their needs and their hopes into something real something concrete. It's kind of mind blowing when you think about it. This whole system designed to like listen to over 38 million people and figure out what to do with all those voices. Not exactly a walk in the park, right? I probably not. Which makes you wonder, how do we as people who care about this stuff make sure we're heard in this whole big system? That's the million dollar question. And Honestly, there's no one right answer, but understanding how this legislative branch works, like how the House and Senate work together and where those friction points are, that's a good place to start. Like they say, knowledge is power, right? Oh, absolutely. But it's not enough to just know the rules of the game. We got to play, too. right? Exactly. Whether you're staying up to date on the issues, contacting your MP or even just having like good conversations with people, you know, about what we want Canada to be. Every little thing adds up. It's like that ripple effect, you know? You throw a pebble in the water and the circles just keep going out and out. Every action we take, every conversation, it's like that. That's a powerful image, and it's true. It reminds us that even in a system as big and sometimes as overwhelming as the government can feel, mm -hmm. we still have a say. We really do. Well, we hope this deep dive has given you a better sense of how Canada's legislative branch works and how you can make your voice heard. Go out there, stay informed, get those conversations going, and remember what you think matters. Thank you.